folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard coming to you from Studio 2012 with another Watchmen video broadcast. You know, every time I come in here and get ready to record one of these Watchmen broadcasts, I uh, always get, get everything ready here. got my former friends here ready and available. And I have my longtime friend, this Bible here. And I always try to pray before I start talking. Hope, pray that God will just bless something that I do or bless His Word as it goes forth. And <clears throat> when I got done praying just now, I noticed that my Bible was open to Ecclesiastes. I just came in, opened it, set it down. You know, it's a table prop. Uh, more than that, though. And where it fell open was um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And I had this verse underlined. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. I'm going to be dealing with a very, very serious matter today. And it does matter. It matters to me, and it, hopefully it matters to you. And I want you to draw a conclusion by the time I'm done giving all of the information, all of the verses that I have for you. I'm going to try to lead you to a conclusion. My hope and prayer is that it's the right conclusion, the correct conclusion, not according, not according to me and not according to you or not according to any other man, but according to the Word of God. I want to draw you to a conclusion on what you believe about the Bible. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, and you should, and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Why were you born? Why are you here? Why are you living in the day that you're living in right now? Why are you listening to this? Could be that you desire to know truth. It could be that somebody just gave you this in a DVD or someone said, hey, you need to watch this YouTube video or whatever. But our responsibility is not to play baseball, it's not to have sports, it's not to have mega churches or anything like that. Our entire responsibility is summed up this way, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. One of the things that I absolutely know is that, number one, I am going to stand before God one of these days and give an account for the things that I have done. And the secret things, that means the things that I have thought or the things that I think in my mind. And those things will be brought into judgment one of these days. And so I approach this subject with fear and trembling, not just of the hope that you will receive what I'm going to give you today, but the idea that I know that every word that I speak today, not only is it being recorded now for everybody to watch, but it's being recorded in heaven, and God will bring these words either for me or against me one of these days. So I have to make sure that what I say comes from and is based upon what I know to be the entire truth of the Word of God. And so we're going to be dealing with this issue of, I have, I have right here, I have the King James Bible. And then over here I have uh, something that I got in college. This is the Greek New Testament. Actually, I have a, another one, the, uh, the interlinear Greek New Testament. See, because when I was in college, I kind of cheated a little bit. Okay? Um, let's see here. I have the Living Bible. I have something called the book. I have the, uh, let's see here, which one is this one? The New Revised Standard Version. I have the New King James Version. I have the N New International Version. They're all different versions, different translations of the Bible. And a lot of people want to say, well, they all say the same thing. They just kind of use a little different language. Um, we're going to show you that they don't all say the same thing. There's a major differences between these and this. In fact, there's even major differences between this one and this one. These don't, they don't agree. They don't get along very well. And so we're going to deal with this issue. Now, you can either have a closed mind because you were taught as I was taught in a seminary or at a Bible college or from a pulpit. You were taught that there is no such thing as a perfect Bible. You were taught that. That's what I was taught. 
And I, and I want you to just kind of not think of, uh, he's King James only. That's a cult. And I want you to think that way because really that's not what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to try to teach you that, number one, I believe in the inspiration of God, the plenary verbal inspiration of God, that God, when Jeremiah was writing, God said every word that Jeremiah wrote down. Those are the words of God. I'm going to show you, show you that from the scripture. Number two, I believe in the preservation of the Word of God, and I'm going to show you that from the Scriptures. I'm going to show you how that works, how God preserved His Word from the Scriptures. Then I'm going to show you something that I really want you to understand this, that I'm getting this from the Word of God. I'm getting this from the Bible. Is that God not only inspired His Word, He not only preserved His Word, but God translated His Word into the language that you and I use right now. He, he's the one that did that. And if you're going to have problem getting over that hump, I want you to at least give me a, about an hour or two of your time because I'm going to try to explain this. At least, and here's, what I, here's what I want you to I just want you to at least hear me out on this. And if you find that scripturally, not not what the, uh, not what the uh, manuscript evidence says, not what uh, Dr. So-and-so says, and not what you've heard in Bible college and seminary, because I heard it all, and I used to believe it. But not based upon what you already think, but based upon, number one, do you fear God and do you fear His commandments? Do, are you, do you believe that's what, that what is written in this book is correct and is right? Do you believe that? And so I'm just going to ask you to question. Uh, we're going to deal with which, which Bible should we, should we believe, which one should we use, and I'm going to let you be the judge. I'm going to let you judge yourself on this issue. And knowing now, knowing that both you and I are going to stand together, probably side by side, in front of the same judge, the same God. And he's going to use a standard. He's going to use a, a perfect measure to judge both you and I. He's not going to judge you differently than me or me differently than you. We're going to be judged the, the exact same way. How is God going to do that is the question. And I want you to understand where my heart is today. It's not to make you followers of Mike Hoggard. It's not to make you part of the King James only crowd. It's to get you to understand and believe that you can have, that your hope and that you can still believe in the Bible that God spoke, preserved, and God speaks this way to us in the language that you and I speak. And I'm going to show you that from the Bible. So let's, uh, in fact, here's what I want you to do. Psalm 34, verse 8. The Bible says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And then Psalm 1830, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust him. And so here's what I'm wanting you to do according to the scripture. I want you to taste this. How do you know you're not going to like it? How do you know you are going to like it? But I want you to taste this idea. I want you to hear me out on this and I want you to try this in your mind based upon all the evidence that you think you have. I want you to taste and see whether or not what I'm going to show you today is good. And I'm going to let you be the judge on this issue. And here's how we're going to start. We're going to, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. We're going to find out how we ended up with, with these. Okay? We're going to find out how we ended up with this uh, 1611 Bible, how we ended up with, with all of these, including the, uh, the Greek text and so on, how, how we did this. And we're going to follow this from the Scriptures. We're going to let the Scriptures be our guide. Um, and the question arises, how can I hear from God? Do I hear God in an audible voice? Do I have dreams and visions? Uh, do, I, uh, do I believe that I can hear God from the pages of the Bible? And I'm going to show you the standard that God himself set down for mankind. Because remember, it's that standard that you and I are going to be judged by. Is the standard that God himself sets down. He's, and he sets it down, I believe, according to his word. Let's go to Exodus chapter 17, verse 14. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial 
in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out of the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. I want you to notice that God told Moses to write this for a memorial in a book. And you and I both know we've played that game before where uh, I'm going to say something to you and then you turn around to say it and by the time it gets to the 20th person, the 20th person repeats it. It's not the same as what I said it originally. And, and, and here we are, we're dealing with what was original. Let's say that God told me something. Let's say that I'm Moses and God specifically told me words to say to everybody. Well, you know as well as I do that by the time they get around to this person here, orally, that the words that this person has is not the same words as the original words that were given. And so what God plainly told to Moses was, write this for a memorial in a book. And so we have the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that the Bible says that Moses wrote these things down, and he wrote them down in a book. Deuteronomy 17, verse 18, And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And this was the law concerning Israel. God says, you get into the land, I know for a fact you're going to want a king because I can see into your future. And when he becomes king, I want him to sit down and I want him to write out a copy of this law in a book. And I want him to rule according to not what he heard, not what was passed down by oral tradition, not what grandfather told him how the old days used to be. He's going to rule according to what is in the book. It's been written down and preserved that way. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 24, And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished. In other words, this verse is telling us that Moses wrote down all the words of God, the law, he wrote it down in a book until they were, in other words, he wrote the very last thing that God said. He wrote it all down. And so this is where we get into the plenary verbal inspiration of the Bible, that God took all all the words of the law of God, and he wrote them down, and they were finished. It was over with. It was done. God, when, when God stopped speaking, that's when Moses stopped writing. And that's what we believe from the scriptures. First Samuel 10, verse 25. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom, and wrote it in a book, and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, Every man to his house, the manner of the kingdom, how God rules, how God reigns, what God's word is, what God's law is, what are his expectations of us, and what you and I can expect from God, these things were written down by Samuel in a book. So we have Moses being a part of, an, a part of the authorship of the Bible. We have Samuel writing down the things of God. Job chapter 19, verse 23, Job said, Oh, that my words were now written, oh, that they were printed in a book. Well, they were, Job. They were printed in a book. Every word that Job said concerning this ordeal that he went through, uh, 